Greetings all. It's the Devious Monkey here. Guess what we're doing? Old tricks are the best tricks. So today, I took the ZV-1 off of the overhead setup, since I don't do all that much of it, threw the Zomai wide angle lens back onto it, went through all the menus, sort of, playing around trying to figure out how to hell to use this camera again, other than filming overhead shots, and threw it back on the Sony Bluetooth grip. And I decided that today, I'm going to vlog with this. So there's a couple of things that are in intriguing about going back to using the ZV-1 for, for the vlogging style stuff that I want to do. That A7C with the 16 to 35 and the whole setup is incredibly heavy. It's very heavy for vlogging and it means that I'm going to have to use Catalyst Browse all the time because forget about the stabilization, it, it's shit. We all know that. I think that if I go back to the way that I was doing things before, I switched all to full frame, that I was using uh, one A6600 as a Cinerig that never left my studio. And then I had an, the second A6600 that I was using as my run and gun film camera. But I was using mostly the Insta360 for like the daily walk around vlogs because you can't beat the stabilization, all that kind of stuff. However, you're stuck with colors, you're stuck with, you know, no zoom and this, that, and the other thing. So it was just, meh, it wasn't optimal. Now, having this Zomai wide angle lens on here sort of puts the kibosh on too much zooming. I don't do a lot of zooming anyways when I'm vlogging, but I, the, this camera is so much more controllable than the Insta360 that I think that it will work really well going back to using it as my as my vlogging camera. One of my vlogging cameras, we'll put it that way. I'm not saying that I'm not gonna use the A7C. Yes, I am, especially when I wanna do something more than just this daily vlogging stuff. Especially once I get the 20 millimeter lens, you know, we'll play more. But for now, I think I'd like to go back to using this ZV-1 for, for a lot more of the vlogging. And after carrying around that A7C setup and everything, there's no denying this is way the hell lighter plus and here's here's where i get into the puzzle it's smaller it's lighter the sound is great in camera just with the little dead cat on the top of it and it also you know i have the fake s cinetone on it great more controllable blah blah blah, blah. and here's a big one it's got the active stabilization on it it's got eye autofocus you know the eye autofocus is great. Not that the other autofocus modes aren't, but it's just a, it's like a sort of icing on the cake. But the big thing is that active stabilization. And yes, it cuts in, but if you went back and looked at my video where I showed the tape marks and all that kind of stuff in my studio at the time, how much real estate you get with this wide angle lens that putting it into active stabilization and getting that crop, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything away. I still have a shit ton of real estate on the screen, so I'm not worried about that. And I get active stabilization, which I have tested before and said that, it, I mean, it's pretty much just as good as a gimbal. And then I don't have to run everything through Catalyst Browse. Yesterday, I did the one long take when I was out at Pleasure House Point. It took an hour to, to render that in Catalyst Browse. And then I ended up just cutting it all up and I barely used, you know, eight, 10 minutes of it maybe. So, all right, you get the idea. We'll come back to that because I'm freaking hungry and I want to go eat my bagels. We're back at Pleasure House Point. I've got the ZV-1 with the Zomai wide angle lens on it. It's still in its small rig cage. I put the small rig, little bitty handle back onto it. It always had the peak design plate on the bottom. It's back on the small rig clamp, which is mounted on the Bluetooth grip, the Sony Bluetooth grip. I have, have repaired it so I can control everything with my thumb. And my settings are auto white balance, 150th. It's at this point blinking at F11, ISO 125. How's it going? And uh, I have it on active stabilization and I probably should turn on, let me see if I can do that without stopping the recording. I guess I can do it. Well, and now I have the ND filter on. Okay, this is very picturesque. 
because I'm sitting here looking at the wonderful scenery rather than scanning for birds. I'll show you what I mean. I only barely just got back here and I don't have the right outfit on. I have shorts, you know, just because. I know I'm not gonna be in the woods, but I have low top running shoes on and they are already filled with sand <laughs> just from just from walking in through the entrance. A little tough and if I zoom, everything's gonna be shot because of the widening lens, but there is a hunting green heron right here. So it has been a while since I've used the ZV-1 for anything other than the overhead setup. So having to go through and figure out what buttons I need to push and what settings I need to check. I have not done like a 100% thorough check of the settings, but I think I got it close enough that this should look all right. It's funny when I'm walking and I'm trying to film stuff but I'm paying attention to what I'm filming and not where I'm walking and you know these trails are so uneven and I'm constantly like oh, like bottoming out so to speak and jarring and when I use catalyst brows you don't see me trip like that I wonder if it will be that way with this active stabilization I've been playing with the settings going manual going shutter priority NDs on ND off all over the place, auto ISO, playing with everything. This is the kind of day that really challenges your equipment because there's no, there's no perfect setting simply because of the fact that the, the sun is coming in and out of the clouds sometimes every five seconds. So I'm just going with shutter priority at 1 50th because I'm shooting in 24 frames a second and I'm just letting the camera do everything else. It's all I can do. I'm curious to see how the mic is doing out here. I always liked it before. I don't think it was a big of a problem, but I've played a lot more with audio since I was using this as a vlogging camera. So we'll find out. I haven't used this as a vlogging camera in a long time. Again, it's been set up as my overhead cam but I mean, I have two cables plugged into it and it's on a ball head, so it wasn't that difficult to take down. The difficult part was getting used to using it again in this fashion. So I had to go through and redo all the settings and familiarize myself with them. And again, like I just talked to Yankee Cowboy, I don't like flip out screens. I prefer flip up screens. So I'm constantly looking over to the side and I know I need to just look at the damn lens. Got to retrain myself. So yeah, I wanted to test this thing, see how it did with the active stabilization and with the audio with, without having a microphone on it, just the built-in mic with the provided dead cat. That's pretty much it for today. That's all I got for you. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.